joined by Rutgers head coach C. Vivian Stringer, senior forward Benaj Laney, and Richard junior guard Brianna Canty. And we'll go ahead and open it up to questions. Vivian, it was kind of the opposite of last game. Last game, you guys had the huge lead, squandered it. Again, excuse me, last home game against Michigan, you had the big lead, squandered it. They never took the lead, and you guys rallied. This time, you guys had the huge deficit, rallied, tied it, but never took the lead. How hard is it to get over the hump in a situation like that? Um. Well, you see, we didn't get over it, didn't you? Um, it, it's tough because Maryland is a is an outstanding team. I mean, they 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 play very calm, relaxed. They they do what they do, at, which is they do it well. The coach does a great job, uh, and they execute. It wasn't surprising to see Lexi Brown knock those shots down right from the beginning on, off the left side. Uh, that wasn't supposed to happen. But what I am proud of our team uh, was that we uh, decided to switch it up expose ourselves and playing the man-to-man -man defense and maybe that's just what we're going to have to do um, you know because we were able to track these people a lot better um, when we went into the man-to-man -man defense um, uh, but it was a bit much um, I think that things like the um, technical which I'm not saying we deserved it or not but we just we just love to get one every two days every two games or so so we just like to make sure that happens so that happens and you know Kind of, kind of affects the momentum, but we like the challenge, and so we get up and try to figure out what else we need to do. But um, it, it's tough, especially with. Uh, we were happy and fortunate that Bree is able to give us, spell us some minutes. Um, I thought that Essie did a nice job. She really did. It was, it was good for us to have, to have had uh, Rachel um, show up, and she's been showing up more. Um, more often than not so it's, it's good it's all coming together but um, it's tough it's, it's tough in the, the Big Ten uh, with the number of games that we have and unfortunately this was was home so uh, I wish we had won it and um, you know and better still wish that Benaja wasn't in the foul trouble that she was in uh, because as a rule I think that she's probably playing about six 35 to 38 minutes a game and she's a rebounder she's key for us so when that happened we had two choices. One is you saw put two big people in, which we've not done at all this year, or we put Essie as a point guard and Essie's five six, you know, trying to match up with a six three and six four. And it, it speaks to our de depth and um, and you know our depths depth. So we've got to um, do a little better job of trying not to. I've got to do a better job of making sure that we don't get in foul trouble. That we can uh, continue to play it out, uh, play it out strong. I thought that, um, given that Benaja had four fouls, and this is what happened, I think, in uh, the Tennessee game, when Rachel they kept going at her, and it caused a lot, a number of points. And I thought that that's what they're going to do with Benaja. So we were trying to hold off for the last six minutes, so we can go down with her. And the same thing with uh, with Brianna Kenny, who also uh, was in deep foul trouble. That flagrant foul did really seem to be a big key because it was essentially a four-point switch because Tyler was coming back, would have had two free throws, and instead that takes that potential away mm -hmm. and gives it to them, and they made their two free throws. Do you think that was kind of the beginning of the end? or? Well, it, 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 um, in retrospect, you know, we can see what happened. But but think about that. Were you here when, when the same thing happened when they, they said something to Benazia? And the question I had is, is that something that was caught when the official saw it, if that is what it was, or did, or, or is the coach talking to them and then they, oh, yeah, let us check, because that happened with, with her the same way. But as I was sharing with the team, truth of the matter is that uh, we've got to be so good that we can deal with that uh, and, it, and it not matter. Um, so we can't expect any kind of a break. We're not looking for it. Um, and, and so did it matter? Yeah, it mattered big. It was a big swing, and I'm sure that that would have helped us. But at the end of the day, um, they did what they needed to do, and we didn't. I th think that there were things that we could have done better. You know, we could have seen uh, the open people. We're, we're, we're going to be better. Uh, we're going to be better because we've got to be better. Uh, but we just didn't do what we needed to do. I thought, like I said, we, we it would be nice if we could have everybody show up <coughs> at the same time and on, at, on the same day with those cylinders working. Uh, because we, it's good to see, I can't tell you enough how important it is for Rachel to do what she's doing. I, I can't, because that was a piece that has been missing. Uh, Rachel as well as uh, Ariel 
uh, Ariel in the game before gave us 10 rebounds. So, so, they, so we feel like that piece is beginning to come in. Um, so the importance of the consistency to have Bree back healthy, uh, and I'm really, quite frankly, looking to see if she's not going to be sore. If she's not sore tomorrow, then maybe we got to play her back. Uh, because what has been happening for quite some time since Bree has been hurt is we've been sputtering. We've been working hard, but we don't have the unit that, that does need to play. So we're, we're out of sync in terms of the substitutions and the whole thing. So if Bree is okay, then we can go back into the, a routine. It's not too late for us to uh, to develop that consistency in terms of substitutions and allow these guys to get the break that they need and to um, to come in and, and make a difference. But uh, this was hit and miss today. Good night, so that's three Tennessee, North Carolina, Maryland, three home games, top teams, teams you want to be in the same class with. Played the top but lost each time. Any concern that it becomes mental at some point getting over that hump? Are you talking to me? No, but Nigel. Sorry. Oh. I'm sorry, can you say that again? I was, I was saying North Carolina, Tennessee, Maryland, three teams you want to be in the same class with that you lost top games to. Any concern that that builds and, you know what I mean, it gets mental a little bit getting over the hump, or are you not concerned? Um, I mean, we're concerned to – we're concerned in the sense that we have to understand the reason that we're losing. And that's something that we have to overcome. So mentally, we have to, like I said, we have to understand what's going on, why we're losing, things that we have to work on. And I think once we do that, we'll turn it around and be able to beat these teams. Questions? Brown, you first came back really at home, uh, four or five from the floor, it seemed like when you came on, really kind of sparked in that second half. Um, you know, how are you feeling about your effort today and, you know, and overall just how you're fitting back into the team now? I feel <clears throat> I feel great. You know, physically I feel I feel good. Um I just, I just feel good. Can I should Brian up for me in the last game you guys against Michigan gave up the lead but never let them get ahead of you. Mm -hmm. Tonight you battled back to tie it but couldn't get that lead at all. Is that would have been, I guess, important for you guys to take the lead and sort of put the pressure more on them than keeping it as a chance to always trying to catch up? Was it, would have been important for you guys to actually get the lead tonight that it helped you guys? Oh, yeah. Um, if we could have got the lead, you know, it would have definitely gave us more momentum. Uh, excuse me. It would have gave us more momentum. Um, I mean... That's about it. You got to, you got to, it's like this. Um, when you're down, what do you do to, 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 to stop the clock? Because the, the clock is not our friend at that particular point. Um, it's clear that um, Rachel uh, was going to get and one. We, she going to get something out of this, okay? Um, so one of two things, either we needed to have the drive or we needed to hit, take the hit to the inside because at least with the drive, uh, then we are putting the pressure on them in terms of the foul situation. You know, um, none of us were really hitting outside jump jump shots worthwhile talking about. Uh, so to move the ball quickly and look for the drive, this is what we know. We we will we're going to have to learn how to win, and how to win is just recognizing what what was given to us, whether it's in a zone or or in a man to man situation. Um, for example, right now I think we know who probably we can get the ball to in a man-to-man, um, one-on-one -on -one situation, who can get what we need. If we didn't need a jump shot, what do we need and how do the, to, to, to get that? Uh, so I think that, that, that we know that. I thought that, uh, quite frankly, I'm, I'm surprised that, um, that Maryland played a zone. That, that was very interesting uh, because I don't know that they played anybody. Uh, and I thought that it was just like, uh, I think it was Iowa that hadn't played uh, any zone, but they came in here and they played zone. You know, Maryland. I mean, was I shocked? Yes. Um, have we played against zone? Yeah. Um, I'm kind of surprised. And we had planned to play zone, but had to go into to a man-to-man -man situation. Any other questions? Coach, same thing Ryan asked uh, Benazza. Benazza, is it frustrating you guys have lost three games at home now to teams that are the top ten in the country that you should be with, in your mind, I'm guessing? Is it frustrating? I, I, I haven't taken a, um, a Moltrin 
since the beginning of this, this year. I have a, a major headache. That's why you keep having, yes, I am really, I got a real tight headache. Trust me when I tell you that. So uh, that's what the first thing I want to do is just relax my neck because it's killing me. Yes, it's frustrating, but, but no, it, it fires me up. I'm just more upset. It really fires me up. No, I'm not dropping my head because we know what we've got to do, and we just got to do it in, in a discussion. So I'm not, you guys, you're not here to, to, to accept second, are you? No, no, we are not. Excuse my French, but hell no. So I'm, I'm not happy about this at all. You know, but, but, but as we talked before in a locker, in order to do something different, insanity is continuing to do the same thing and expect different things to happen. So we've got to, we will deal with how do we lose and how do we win, and it's got to change, and it can change. That's the incredible thing about it. So, no, it's very frustrating because, you know what, somebody looking at the score and think, oh, wow, they lost by 10 points and 11 points, and you all who are witnessing the game know god darn well this game was much closer than that. So it's not a matter of us saying uh, we lost and it doesn't come with L. It's a win or you lose. And so long story short is we've got to put a period behind what the word is. Is it a W or is it an L? And we've got to pay the price for those 40 minutes. Because at the highest levels, when you talk about the North Carolinas, you talk about the Tennessees, you talk about, um, you know, Maryland, Iowa, whatever, and the number of the teams, the West, the Nebraska is coming in here. And the rest of them, guess what? You know, no one wants to hear an explanation. And no one will ask you an explanation, W or L. So, no, I am not happy. We've got to do something about this in coming in here. Yes, they are legitimately top 20 teams. But if we are also top 20 teams, then we've got to win some of these games. So, what was that? Any other questions? Thank you, ladies.